So let's see how we can use Python to solve our bacon example. Let's go back to our spreadsheet and let's have a look at the parts that we like. Like this, this simple view lookup is pretty okay. However, this is problematic. It has two lines and also it depends on those ugly sum ifs in the other worksheet. So we want to get rid of that and replace that with Python. So let's take this column select it and let's copy it back as values just so it's like a test so we can see if our python will do the exact same thing as the original formulas and we can get rid of that and make some room for our python code steps in python so the question is now what are we going to do here what actually are we calculating and if we think about it what we're going to calculate here is for each of the movies is there an actor in it that has a bacon number that is unequal to a dash that has a defined bacon number and in order for us to figure out what to place there in python we're going to need the theory glasses so let's go to the blackboard and have a look at what exactly we are calculating so what we'd like to have is a function like sum that calculates based on the name of the movie the list of actors that are in it, their bacon numbers. So what is the type of that function? So let's say all of the steps for a given movie, we put in a movie, and what we want to get out is a list of bacon numbers for that movie. So for instance, for Crazy Stupid Love, this list would be one dash dash. These are the first three rows currently in the spreadsheet. So what we get is a list of things. So what is in this list? It's either a dash, either it's undefined, or it will be a value. And if you remember from the previous types, lists are quite hard to work with in spreadsheets you have to use array formulas for that but in python's lists are very easy they're one of the built-in types and they're very easy to manipulate something like this will be easily done in python if we have that list one dash dash what we need to calculate is the bacon number of that list so let's call that function next step what we put in here is this list so we put in the list of the bacon numbers of the actors and what we will get out is a value. So these are the things that we're going to program in Python. Give me a movie and I will give you a list of the bacon numbers of the actors in it and give me that list and I will give you the bacon number of everyone that is in this movie. So we don't need the theory glasses anymore. Let's go back to Excel and have a look at how function defining works in Python. So let's power up a shell we click Python shell in Data Nitro, and now we can define functions. So let's start with an easy one. We say we want to have a function plus one, where we put in something, and the result is that something plus one. So this is very much like defining our own sum function or our own minus function. We can put something in and we get a result. For example, now if we ask Python, what is this? it knows that plus one is a function, and if we put something in, for instance, we get the plus one of five, the result is six. So it's a bit cryptic maybe, but the idea is that you define your own functions, and you can say, what do I take in? The number x, and what do I return? That number x plus one. And this is the exact same thing, the function defining that we're going to use to address our bacon issue. So let's make another shell and let's make another function. And you know what function? The functions that we defined on the blackboard. So we start with all steps. All steps is a function that takes in the name of a movie and it returns all the bacon numbers of people in that movie. So for example, for crazy stupid love, the result of this function would be one and a dash and another dash. So we're going to traverse all the lines in our spreadsheet and see if we have a match for our movie. Initially, if we start with the first line, of course, we haven't found any matches yet. And then with the for syntax function, 
and this is a Python thing, we can use everything, we can address every line. So we start at the second line and we go into the, until the twelfth line and at every line we're going to look is the value in the second column. So in the row that we are in, which is i, our variable for the loop, in the second column is the value of that thing that we are inspecting equal to the movie we have put into our function. So this should remind you of the sum if function, where we're summing a bunch of lines only if it matches a certain value. Well, here we are grabbing a piece of values together only if it matches a certain value. So what are we adding to our list? Not the name of the movie, but the column right next to it. So the cell on the row we are inspecting in the third column. If we have a match, we add this to our list with the append function. And if we're done, if all of the rows have been inspected, then we return the list of steps. So remind yourself of, like the plus one, we put in five, we get back six. This is, we put in a movie, we get back a list. So we can put the result of this into a variable. Let's try that for the movie Crazy Stupid Love. We make a variable called the steps of Crazy Stupid Love. And what we're going to put in that variable is the result of our function. The all steps applied on Crazy Stupid Love, but here we should add quotes because it's a string, a text value. So we hit enter and now the value is saved in our variable and if we ask Python now what is in this variable, the result will be one dash dash. And this is exactly what we wanted, right? The result of crazy stupid love is the list one dash dash. So the first part of our problem is solved, but it's still solved in the Python world and we would like to have this value back in the spreadsheet world. So we can do that, we've seen that before, we can edit the spreadsheet from Python, we can say the cell at the second column and the fourth row, oh, I'm sorry, second row and the fourth column should be the value that we have in our variable and if we hit enter now immediately the value has been updated. And what you see here is that Python can put an entire list in a cell. If we want to do that with Excel, we have to use array formulas, as we've seen in videos of previous weeks, and Excel cannot put an array, a list, in one cell. You have to give it space to fill up all the cells. This is not the case with Python. We can just take the whole list and put it in a cell, which is a lot conven more convenient if you are using a lot of list operations like we are. So let's continue with the second half of our problem. I have cleared the, the shell now, however we can still see all the functions that are there. Python has remembered them, so we still have the all steps function and we're going to make a new one now. We're going to make the function next step. As we saw on the blackboard, this is a function that takes in the list that we have just created and returns the next value. So we're going to traverse the steps, one dash dash in this case, just as we have traversed the rows in the previous example. So we use for again, a Python construct that's used for looping, and we're inspecting all of the elements in our steps list. So if we see something that is not a dash, like a one, we know what the result is, right? Then the result should be that value plus one. So if we see something unequal to, that's the exclamation mark syntax, then we know that we have to return plus one. But what if we see a dash? We don't know what to return because the next row could be a dash or it could be a one. So if we see a dash, we don't know yet. However, if we've only seen dashes and we haven't returned anything yet, then we're going to return a dash because that exactly expresses what we want. If everything is a dash, the result will be a dash. So we have a function, it is defined, and we still have our variable one dash dash that we've made in the previous slide. So now we can use that, we can call this function on the variable. And that goes like this, like plus, like plus one, we just say, the ver put the variable in and we get the result. So if we put this list in, our result is two, which is exactly what we wanted. If we have a movie with three actors, one is Kevin Bacon and the other two have an undefined Bacon number, then this movie will give the Bacon number of two to everyone that has played in it. 
So, so far, we've been using only the Python shell option, but we, we, what we can also do is use the editor, and then we don't have to type in the functions on the crazy little line thingy, we can just type them in a text file and save this. Just as you save a spreadsheet, you can also save these py Python files. And that's, of course, a lot easier than typing them in, because once you've closed the shell, all the functions that you have defined are gone. So we've put everything, same function definitions now, in a file, and from that file, we can run it and put it back into the spreadsheet. So again, we're going to use a for loop, and for all of the lines, we're going to print, to make it easy, we're just going to print the number of the row, just so you can see how it goes. So we say the value of i m4 is going to be just i. So if we made that, we save the file and we hit run, whoop, you see at one go all of the functions are, all the i's are there. But I've made a mistake. I was using 212 all the time and I forgot that it's until 12 and not until and including 12. So this should actually be 13 and so has the function. So now we've gone into 13 and you see all of the rows are filled. But of course we don't want the i there, what we like to have is the result of those two functions that we've just defined. So let's start with the all steps again. So we take the, all, the value from the second column. So now we have the movies. That's the first step we need, because the name of the movie is what we're going to put into the all steps function. So here we go, all steps in it. We're not using a string anymore, but we get the value from the spreadsheet. It's nice, right? So now for every movie, we have a list of all the actors that are in it, and we just need to put that list into the next step function. There we go, we put in the list, and we hit run. Ah! Look at that, the result is exactly the same as the result that we have obtained with all the VLOOKUPs and the sum ifs. But instead of using a lot of formulas, we just used a little bit of code to calculate the values. Why is this code easier than VLOOKUP? Because we use constructs like a list and a loop that are not native, not natural to spreadsheets. These are constructs that are very common in programming. However, if you want to do something like inspect all of the lines of my spreadsheet and do something in a certain case, this is not something that spreadsheets are made for. They're made for calculation and not really for inspecting values and then changing them continuously. So these are scenarios where programming languages are just a little bit easier. So what we can do now, we can get rid of those. We don't need those ugly sum ifs anymore. We can select them and be done with it. Go away, we don't want to see you anymore. And here, notice how I've put back the VLOOKUP secretly while you weren't looking, just to show you it one more time before we get rid of it too. So we don't need that, those values anymore. But we don't need to get rid of all of the formulas. Some of them are still fine. The VLOOKUP, for instance, the first one that we use, it's fine. It's a simple function, you can use it. But some parts, the ugly parts, we have removed now and replaced them by this short Python code. And you see me in this video, I only did the second step. So your challenge for the rest of the week is to extend this Python program so that it doesn't just work for two steps, but it works for an unlimited number of steps, or let's say at least until 12, because that's the highest bacon number that there is. So good luck with that homework, and see you next week.